My name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 108 year old classic sailing yacht Tally Ho. I've already replaced the keel and I've had to do a lot of deconstruction and recently re-loft the boat but I'm now just starting to get into the reframing so I made the first futtock for the first new frame last week and now I'm going to be making more frames to replace the old English oak frames. So David is inside the boat and he's um, cutting the remaining fastenings that are holding the last of the planks on but we're actually replacing those fastenings with clamps as soon as they're cut so we're not taking any more structure away from the boat uh, we're just changing the fastening method to clamps and then once that's done I'll be able to manipulate the planks one at a time uh, if I need to make room to allow the new frames to go in position so I'm driving out the rivets that hold the planks to the frames So right now I'm looking for one of the short futtocks that's going to make up the top part of uh, one half of a sawn frame. For this I'm just going to take a piece out of this short slab. This piece has been out in the sun a bit and uh, it's checking out a bit so we'll see how it looks when it's planed down but it should be okay. Uh, but I want to use it before it dries out anymore. And I've been uh, trying different ways of roughing these out to see which is the most efficient. What you doing there, Zoli? I'm placing a pattern on the wood and then marking it, marking the bevels on it, and then we're gonna saw it out on the ship saw. So we've now cut out all the futtocks for this first frame. We've cut the butts on the ends of them and we're just gonna assemble them and see if they all fit together. Now before we actually put any new frames into the boat, I want to make sure I know where the center line is. Feeling a bit more stable up there? Oh yeah. So basically what we've done here is uh, just measured to the center of the keel timber and we're going to be using that as our datum. Then we've used a series of plumb bobs to bring that measurement up and we're going to string a line above the boat which is going to serve as our center line datum. Yeah, somewhere around there good enough. The forward one is about a quarter of an inch off. Yeah. Three eighths. And that's about the same. same. I reckon a sixteenth to port. We've taken two small lines made projections of the center line of the keel on these thin lines above the boat. So one of these lines is attached to the shed and one of them is attached to the boat and that's just in case the boat or the shed moves but we can refer each of them back to the keel to check if they've moved pretty easily. And that means that when we put new frames in we can use this line to make sure that those frames are centered on the keel and we'll be rebuilding the boat on that center line. And that might mean because the boat is a bit crooked in a few different ways that in the bow, we might be pushing the frames a bit to port of where the original ones are. Uh, and the stern, it might be a bit to starboard or however it works out, but there'll just be minor adjustments to straighten out the boat. So we've got another volunteer this week and this is Ruben. Hi. <laughs> Ruben's come pretty far. Where have you come from? The Netherlands. Netherlands, yeah. our first Dutch volunteer. I'm a mechanical engineering student. And what brought you out here? Uh, holiday, to visit some family and uh, help you out on a boat. Excellent. Well, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. So we've got Ruben uh, removing some of the remaining fastings on the planks and replacing them with clamps and screws uh, so that we can then 
remove the frames more easily and manipulate the planks around the new frames. All right, so we've already cut all the pieces for the first frame now. So I'm gonna cut all the pieces for the next frame first, which is actually on the same station. It's just a frame on the other side of the boat. That'll do. So Ruben has made this very smart handle for the ship saw, which is good because the motor for the tilt mechanism is quite fast. So on these frames in the center section when there's not a huge change in bevel, uh, it's actually easier to do it by hand. So as I push the frame through the saw following my line, Ruben is going to be here turning this handle and adjusting the bevel of the saw blade to match the angles that I've written on the piece. And he's got a gauge here, which tells him what angle the saw is at. So if I yell out five degrees, he can see on this gauge that he needs to go this way, five degrees. And it's about half a degree to one turn of this handle. Of course, it's actually much harder to do it one way than the other, because if you move it this way, you're actually lifting the whole weight of the saw. Whereas if you do it the other way, then you've got gravity helping you. So Australian Mark is back. Hey. But just for a couple of days, right? Two days. Two days. Giving us a hand, what are you up to at the moment? So I'm making some adjustable saw horses for the in-feed and out-feed table of the ship saw. Excellent. Sturdy, wide saw horses. Trestles, that's what we like. The best. All right, I'm now going to assemble this frame. So basically the faces of the futtocks which touch each other when the frame is assembled, I'm going to paint with a thick primer. And that's going to inhibit rot if and when any water gets in the gap between the futtocks. I'm also just going to use a little bit of uh, roofing tar here and there, just where there's a, a bigger check in the wood or a little knot which wasn't big enough to bother plugging, but which still could be a void where water could get trapped. All right, so we've assembled the first frame. These frames have a bevel on the inside and the outside. The sides are plumb and flat. The inside and the outside face will be fared in eventually and smoothed off, but that won't happen until all the frames are in. And so they'll be fared to line up with each other and make a smooth outside and inside surface to take the planks on the outside and the 
beam shelf and the stringers on the inside. So now it's time to fasten these together and for that I'm going to use trenels or tunnels or tree nails but basically they are uh, wooden pegs or dowels. They're a very traditional fastening and Tally Ho wasn't built with trenels. She was built with iron pins in between the futtocks but those iron pins being ferrous metal is one of the reasons why her frames are in such bad condition. So I definitely don't want to put ferrous metal into the boat if at all possible. So my options really were to use bronze pins or to use trunnels. And the advantage of trunnels is that once the frames are in and you're putting the planking on, um, you can drill your holes for your planking fastenings and not worry about hitting the bronze pins which are in the frames. If you go through a trunnel, it's just wood so it doesn't make any difference, it doesn't matter, then you can put your fastening in anyway. Now the trunnels are made of black locust which is a timber that grows here in the US. Uh, this stuff came from Oregon. A black locust is traditionally used for trunnels historically and it's the best timber for the job really because it's very hard, very durable, very rot resistant, kind of like live oak in that respect. But it's generally straighter grained and it doesn't check out so much. It doesn't have that interweaving into locking grain. So it's a bit easier to cut very straight dowels with it. I also wanted to use it because of that historical significance. In the US, black locust trunnels were used for hundreds of years. And it's quite nice, even though this is a British boat, to have a little bit of that United States uh, shipbuilding history in the boat as she's being rebuilt here. So to make the trunnels I'm going to use this which is a tenon cutter. So it's designed to go on a drill and then just cut a short round section onto the end of a piece of wood. But because our trunnels are going to be longer I'm going to cut the back off it and then I'll be able to put this in a vise and we'll be able to run longer trunnels through it. So this is just a little trunnel that I did as a test. The wedge went in pretty well on this side, right up to the end, but on this side didn't quite make it, so I've adjusted the wedge size slightly. So here you can see a couple of refinements later. I've adjusted the wedge size, and now it's going in right to the bottom. See, I can't even budge this end, and that's only half a trunnel, and uh, no way I can move that.
the frames have now been assembled, I've bedded them down with primer paint. That's not strictly necessary. I know plenty of boat builders who just put the frames together dry. That's definitely not a bad way to do it. This takes a bit more time, but it does mean that if at some point fresh water does get into the boat, runs down the frames and gets into any gaps in the middle, which might happen from the frames opening up over time and drying out, that's a barrier that's gonna stop it from getting into the wood from that inside face and causing rot there. To put the channels in, the first step is to mark them out. So I marked out where I want them and I found by far the quickest way to drill these holes is with a big auger bit. I've actually ground down the end of this auger bit a little bit just so it makes a hole that the channels will fit into really tightly. So I've ground it down so it's just under 7 8 and the channels are 7 8 so they're a nice tight fit. The only trouble with an auger bit is it tends to split out the wood so where I'm going to drill, I've clamped on a little bit of plywood above and below the piece that I'm drilling and that will prevent any splitting on the top or the bottom face. Oh, it's did a poo on my trestle. stage is just to take a trunnel like this and simply whack it in the hole. Now the slot has to be across the grain because that means it doesn't split the grain of the futtock but instead pushes the grain out in that way so that's stronger. Then I cut half of the top of the trunnel off. Well, Cheka finally convinced me that we have to take a couple of days off work. That's what we're going to do, we're going to have a little holiday and I've spent the last uh, hour or so cutting up some 2x6s and I've just converted our truck into a little camper. 
It's much more comfortable than when I slept in it when I drove across the country a few months ago. I think we're just going to head northwest up to the furthest reaches of the Olympic Peninsula here. It'll be the first couple of days off really I've had since I got back here from England. And we'll get back to this in a couple of days, hopefully refreshed and full of energy to carry on. We were over there, spotted this beach over here and have been hiking through the pretty thick undergrowth. Just got to try and find a way down to it now. All right, well, we're just back from our little holiday and it's nice to be back and see the new frames, which are still looking great, especially if you compare them to the old original frames, which are in a pretty terrible shape. And I'm feeling very energetic and excited to get some more frames cut out and put together and start getting some into the boat. But this is all we've got time for right now. So thanks a lot for watching and a massive thank you to everyone who's donated or otherwise contributed towards the Tally Ho project. It really does make a huge difference and it means I'm able to take the time to make and edit these videos. So I really do appreciate it. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.